In January, Cronkite News tracked the escalating problem of heroin use across Arizona with our documentary Hooked. While drugs like methadone are commonly used for treatment, there might be an even more powerful alternative. It will be one of the degree programs offered and the main focus of the entire project, sustainability. So instead of cutting down all of these trees and completely leveling the area, the plan is to build the university seamlessly among the already existing landscape. During and following the airing of the documentary, a phone bank was set up and answered over 600 calls from both families and addicts themselves who were seeking help and looking for a way to fight this deadly epidemic. From border issues to wildfire dangers, from water resources to the tourism economy, our reporters crisscross the state to cover Arizona like no other media organization can. The small town of Payson sits in the heart of Arizona's rim country, almost 85 miles away from metropolitan Phoenix. But officials in Payson tell us heroin use is just as destructive in rural communities as it is in large urban cities. We'd had some issues with other drug problems in the past, but this is just encompassing our whole community. Earlier this month, nearly 70 people squeezed into Payson Town Hall, some standing in the hallway for a three hour meeting on the growing heroin problem in their community. And what came from that meeting was a sense of desperation. These families are looking for help any way they can get it. A few of the addicts were as well. Despite being a rural town of just 16,000 people, the average user in Payson is the same as elsewhere in Arizona, mostly teens and young adults. Our norm is very similar to what you're seeing statewide and, and in the valley areas as well. We've had users as, as young as 14 years old. Some say kids are using drugs so young because there is nothing else to do in town. Right now, the only thing we got for young people in town is the two parks. and. You know, most of the heroin use is going on at the parks. As part of the solution, the community has since come together with 22 professional and volunteer organizations. The school system uh, at all levels, uh, behavioral services that provides clinical help to uh, addictive, uh, you know, uh, individuals. Uh, we've brought together uh, religious organizations. While the mayor says there are after school activities available, others say more needs to be done for the pace and youth. The kids out here, they need help. They need someone to, you know, they need something to put their time and effort into other than going out and getting high. The town of Payson will hold another town meeting slated for mid April to bring in additional resources, provide more education and help those in need. During this time of the year, which is our holy week, our, our um, spring break, it's, it's very, very busy. They walk, come by buses, and drive personal vehicles back and forth across the border every day. But there are hopes a temporary facility to process travel documents will ease the expected holiday border congestion. The $6 I-94 document, also called a permiso, allows a traveler to stay up to six months in the U.S. and travel farther than the 75 miles their border crossing card allows. On a typical day in fiscal year 2014, the CBP processed over 1 million passengers and pedestrians at Arizona borders. At the Mariposa Port of Entry in Nogales, they were seeing an increase in traffic, so they added eight additional lanes into the U.S., as well as an I-94 document facility. More than 90,000 permisos were issued last March through Nogales ports, and while CBP says it expects the same this year, officers are confident they can handle the holiday rush at Mariposa Port. This port of entry had four lanes for private vehicles. Now we triple the size. So what does that tell you? That we cut the time, we cut the, um, the volume that it's waiting to come into the United States by two thirds. Augustini encouraged people to continue using all ports of entry, but says this new and improved port may get travelers on their way faster. And unlike other ports in Nogales, it has plenty of parking. Local business owners like Fernando Araujo says he is hopeful the new facility will bring more traffic through the Mariposa port and right up the road to the Fiesta market. Coming over here is gonna be too crowded. So if they open another office, be the process will be faster and I'll have my com more business coming through my business here. Get their you know, process done and, and paid and they're on their way. According to a study done by the Alzheimer's Association last year, more than 60% of people diagnosed with Alzheimer's or dementia will wander away from home. Mesa Police Department is developing a program to better educate law enforcement on how to deal with these cases and to raise awareness about this disease. I left probably about quarter to nine that morning and got home about 12.20, 12.30, and he wasn't home. 
It's the biggest fear of caregivers who live with someone diagnosed with Alzheimer's or dementia. What if their loved one wanders away from home? By this point, I am completely frantic because I'm just terrified of what's going to happen to him if he's out overnight and, you know, he's going to be without water, he's going to be without food. How, um, how scared is he going to be? Diane Ranson's husband, Don, was found injured but okay three miles away from home. Police located him after 27 hours of searching. The search started with local police, and now Mesa police are working with the Banner Alzheimer's Institute to create an adult ID kit that puts all the information in one place. It has all of the identifying information, the medical, any kind of drugs that they're taking, what kind of car they drive, and banking information, just everything that our officer would need immediately to try to locate that person. Jan Doherty of the Banner Alzheimer's Institute says the kit will help both caregivers and law enforcement in an emergency. We find that when people are in crisis, it's really hard to think straight and give accurate information. So this will allow the family to have what they need when they need it to connect law enforcement to help them find their person. Ranson believes Don survived due to his good physical health and her ability to provide police with plenty of information. She encourages other caregivers to plan for the unthinkable. Take the precautions. It is a difficult step to take because you f likely feel like you're robbing your loved one of a sense of independence and um, some some say and some autonomy in their own lives, but their safety is the primary concern. Banner and Mesa PD offer these additional tips for caregivers. Put a bell on the door to indicate when it opens or put a lock higher up and out of sight as people with dementia tend to look only straight ahead. Caregivers can also add an additional lock with a safety chain or even deadbolts where they, only they hold the key. And it's crucial to take away car keys when the person should no longer drive alone or even drive at all. Both also advise not to hesitate to call 911. I'm Lauren Hanley, Cronkite News.